welcome on our STM32 Cube IDE Basics training session. In this module, I will demonstrate to you how to add the FreeRTS middleware software to the project based on STM32 microcontrollers using STM32 Cube IDE. So the objectives for this part are the following. First, we'll configure two IOs, PI5 as a GPIO output to control green LED, and PC13 as a GPIO XT13 to monitor the blue button, which is connected, connected to the board. Then uh, we will add the FreeRTO as a middleware to our existing project. And within this FreeRTO, uh, I would add two tasks and one binary semaphore, uh, which would be controlled by our blue button. Let's start uh, with the new project uh, on stm 32 cube IDE. I would use an existing uh, workspace when I've got already some ready projects. I'm creating the new project, uh, so I go to File, New, stm 32 Projects. It will start uh, from the uh, device uh, device selector. I'm selecting uh, stm 32 G071 RB microcontroller version LQFP64, which is used on our Nucleo board. I press next, and then the name of the projects I propose G0, G03 RTOS. I select the target language as C, binary type executable, and we will use stm 32 cube to uh, the project type. I press finish, and now we will be switched to the device configuration uh, window. Okay, uh, so let's start uh, uh, from enabling the debug uh, interface pins. So I go into the system uh, core, uh, sys, serial wire. I can see that both pins are selected as uh, debug uh, interface ones. Uh, second uh, step is a proper configuration of our IOs we would use. The first one is a PA5 when we've got our green LED connected. If I would uh, put into the search PA5, uh, I can see a blinking uh, PA5 uh, pin, just to find it more easily. Uh, I press left button on this uh, pin and I'm selecting GPIO output. Uh, then I need to specify its label, just to have a, a more easy configuration within the coding process. So I press the right button on mouse, selecting enter user label, and uh, I would uh, name it as a LED green. The next step uh, is a configuration uh, of our pin connected to the blue uh, button. It is PC13. So again, left button on mouse. And this time we will select GPIO XT13 because it would be an external interrupt. Please do not worry on this red uh, highlight over here. It means that uh, we have used this pin, uh, so it will be not available for other functionalities like System Wake Up 2. If I would go with the mouse over this red uh, component, I should see the information. What is the reason of highlighting this pin? There is nothing to be worried at the moment. We come back to our pin and over this pin we click the right button on mouse and select user label. We will name it as a blue button. Okay, so this is um, the second component. So from hardware point of view, we create, we configured all of the peripherals. So we go to the middleware, freer toys, and we can select the interface. At the moment, uh, for the G0 family, there is only CMC's V1 library uh, available. This CMC's V1 means that um, over the original freer toys API, we've got the additional layer which is called CMC's OS. So we select uh, CMC's uh, V1 and uh, within the configuration window, we can see a lot of, a lot of new tabs related to FreeRTS. First two, I mean uh, config parameters and include parameters are important because uh, it's uh, in fact creating the a skeleton of the operating uh, system and uh, it's, it reflects uh, the main configuration file within the FreeRTOS, which is freertos config.h file. 
Using uh, config parameters, uh, we can select the type of the kernel, whether it will be it will use preemption or not. Uh, we can specify the tick rate, maximum number of the priorities of the tasks, then minimum stack size uh, for the component. Please be aware that it's given in words. Then the maximum task name length, it's 16 signs. Then we can enable or disable some additional functionalities like mutexes, recursive mutexes, counting semaphores, a tickless mode, uh, which is used for low power applications. We will not uh, change anything in this area. Uh, important component is a memory management settings uh, where we are specifying the total RAM memory area, which would be used uh, for the freer OS. Please be aware that this time it is given in bytes. Uh, so three kilobytes we've got at the moment and the memory management scheme. Uh, we can select uh, this memory management scheme from HIP1 to HIP5. Uh, we've got a dedicated session on the free RTS uh, within our channel, so you can have a look for more details on each uh, memory management schemes. The most uh, flexible one is, uh, in fact, uh, HIP4. If you would like to use the HIP memory, which would be allocated on different RAM areas, please have a look on the HIP5 instead. It will be not our case, so I would select the most popular one, HIP4. Then uh, the important point uh, is... Uh, the last two uh, parameters. The first one is uh, library lowest interrupt priority. Those two components are used to properly cooperate uh, with the interrupts which are present in the microcontroller world. The first one, library lowest interrupt priority, is the lowest possible interrupt priority which is available in the in this particular microcontroller. As it is a Cortex M0+, the lowest possible priority is free. And this lowest interrupt priority is used uh, for the interrupts related to the context switch and the tick interrupt used by the operating system. To be sure that all of the hardware interrupts are processed in proper way, operating system uh, is operating on the lowest possible priorities, just not to interfere with uh, hardware events. Uh, so this is the lowest possible priority for the system itself. The second parameter is used uh, to set the maximum interrupt of the priorities, which can still execute the functions of operating system. Please remember that in uh, Cortex-M uh, devices, uh, lowest uh, priority means highest number. So in this case, I would propose a small change. Instead of three, we will put two. So the task switching and the tick interrupt would uh, have uh, lowest possible priority, number three, while uh, interrupts, uh, which we would like still to execute the operating system functions, would have uh, interrupt uh, priority two. Other interrupts, uh, which we would like uh, to be completely independent from the operating system, uh, will have uh, interrupt priority zero. So in this case, uh, all the hardware interrupts would be not interrupted by the operating system. So this is the basic configuration of the operating system. Let me remind you that all of the operations, all the configurations we are doing here, would be stored later on in a free RTOS config.h file, which is the main configuration file of the free RTOS. The next file is used to include uh, some additional functionalities, some additional functions to the operating system. This is used to add uh, some additional functions to the operating system. The drawback of uh, adding new functions is that uh, we would use, uh, we would use uh, some additional code uh, space. Uh, so if it's not necessary, we can remove some uh, functions to save some code space. We will not uh, use any additional, additional new, we will keep everything as a default setting uh, at the moment. The next, uh, next point is to add two tasks. We go to the task and queues tab. At the moment we've got only one task, it is so-called default task, which is created automatically. We will change this default task to our task 1. Just double-click using uh, left button and mouse on this name and uh, you should see the edit window. So we will change the default task name into the task 1. Uh, we will keep uh, OS priority normal. We've got seven types of uh, priorities, uh, starting from priority idle, 
which is the lowest possible, and uh, ending with uh, so-called real-time. Normally, so uh, somehow in the middle. So let's use uh, priority normal for both tasks. Uh, stack size, uh, it's uh, set on 128 uh, words, so let's keep it like this. Entry function, which is the uh, function which would be called during the task execution. Uh, so instead of this uh, start default task, I would use something different, just task1 underscore app from application. The rest I keep uh, as a default. So this is the task1 and I would add task2, just pressing this add button. And again I've got a new task, so I change the name task2, uh, priority normal. Uh, stack size the same without change, 128 words, and uh, the function would be task to up. And okay, we've got two tasks defined uh, with the same priority, uh, with different functions which would be called during its uh, execution. So this is uh, this is the point number one. Now let's add this, uh, one binary semaphore which uh, would be connected to our uh, external interrupt triggered by the blue button. To do this, uh, we need to uh, go into the timers and semaphores tab, and uh, we need to select uh, the binary semaphore. So below this binary semaphore empty space, we've got the add button. So again, we need to add some binary semaphore. We will change this name into the binary underscore sem allocation dynamic we've got as well in some areas static if we configure the settings of the operating system we can uh, as well use the static memory allocation please have a look that uh, for example in case of the timers and counting semaphores we cannot add anything uh, options are uh, not accessible due to the fact that uh, within the config uh, parameters we have not enabled those components uh, please have a look uh, if I would come back to the config parameters and I would scroll down. Uh, I would scroll down and uh, I would select use timers from disabled to enabled and then come back to timers and semaphores, timers became accessible. Okay, let me change it to disable uh, uh, again. Okay, so we are done. Uh, with all of the settings of uh, operating system from this uh, device configuration window. Let's try to generate the code. I would just save uh, save the, the project and please have a look. I've got a warning. I've got a warning telling me that uh, I should change the time-based source uh, for HAL library from Sysdig, which is the default setting, uh, to some other timer. This is done due to the fact that Sysdig uh, is used uh, by the operating system, FreeRTOS, as a tick uh, timer. And it should not be mixed uh, with the HAL library usage, because in HAL, uh, Sysdig is used uh, to generate all of the delay functions and timeouts and it should not be mixed up. Okay, so this is highly recommended to change the time-based timer for the HAL library. We can use it within the sys, system core and sys tab. And uh, here, at the last point, we've got the time-based source. I can select any of the timers which are available in the system. Uh, what I would recommend to you is to use either timer 6 or timer 7. Both of those timers uh, contains only the time base uh, component, uh, so they can generate uh, the interrupt on overflow. And those timers uh, do not have any input nor output channels, so the potential loss would be uh, minimum in this case. I would select timer 6, and uh, please have a look if uh, now I would go into the timer 6, uh, timers sections, I can see timer 6 unaccessible inaccessible because it has been used as a time base for our application. Okay, let's try to generate the code once again. So I would uh, control, uh, I would just save the project. 
And now on the left side, we should see uh, sketches. The project would be generated. We can see that middlewares folder has been added. Uh, if I would scroll it down, I can see the subfolder third party, then freer OS source, and then um, below uh, you can see the the main file is list.c, which is in fact the the main file uh, which contains the functions uh, related to the scheduler, which is the heart, the core of the operating system. Then the semaphores uh, and the queues are stored, the functions for these are stored within the queue.c file. Uh, all of our tasks uh, are stored within the task.c uh, file. Timers is used for the timer semaphore, uh, then we've got additionally the stream buffer, uh, we've got uh, event groups uh, to communicate uh, between, the ti uh, be between the tasks, and coroutines, which are not used in our architecture. Coroutines are used in 8-bit uh, or 16-bit architecture and requires less resources uh, from the uh, embedded system. Uh, in our case, we will use a full version, so we will use tasks, uh, so this uh, file will be not used. So this is the core, it is completely independent uh, from the embedded system, from the application, from the system when, where it has been added. The connection between our hardware, our STM32G0 and um, FreeRTOS is done uh, within the portable folder. Here we can see GCC and, and memory management uh, folders. In memory management folder, we can see only one file, uh, one file with the name uh, which has been selected in the device configuration. And this uh, heap underscore four dot C file contains the functions to allocate and deallocate the memory, the RAM memory, for operating system uh, components. Uh, so this is strictly related to the to the hardware, and then within the GCC we've got subfolder ARM CM0. So it's uh, for our um, uh, core, which is the, the the heart of our STM32 G0. Uh, inside we can see two uh, files: port.c and port macro.h. Those two files contains the functions, which are connecting the interrupts uh, from the real hardware. Uh, with uh, the functions from the operating system. So this is the real interface between the embedded system which we are using and the operating system we have just added. We will not modify any of those files. All of the modifications of the code which we will do should be done within one of the two uh, files. The first one is app underscore free RTS and main.c uh, file. If we go into the main.c file, we can see it as a standard uh, cube ID or cubemix generated file with some add-ons uh, related to uh, used operating uh, system. So we can uh, see within the private function prototypes, for example, uh, the two functions, which would be called uh, when the task one or task two would be executed. So those names has been defined by us within the task configuration, task tasks add-on uh, within the configuration of the free RTS in a device uh, configurator. So within the main, you can see that uh, we're starting with HAL init, call configuration, GPIO init, and all the peripherals which we would like to init uh, would be in this area. Then below, we can see the preparation of um, the components of the operating system which we have added. So for example, binary semaphore, uh, tasks, and uh, at the end of this process, uh, we've got one single function to, to start the scheduler, it is OS kernel start. After this call, only the tasks which are active uh, would be executed one by one, and we sh should never land below this line. If we land below this line, we've got some problems uh, with the uh, RAM memory allocation. Uh, if we go below, we can see both uh, task uh, application functions defined as empty uh, functions with an infinite loop inside because uh, tasks functions should be defined in such a way that it contains the infinite loop inside as a mini main uh, functions. This is how it looks like, and now this is the time uh, to add some code uh, modification into our generated code. Now let's back to the NVIC settings. 
Before we will generate the code, uh, let's have a look on the NVIC, uh, so interrupt uh, configuration. So within the system core NVIC, I can see some new settings. So we've got, I've got a new uh, column over here, uses free RTOS function, which means that uh, I can select which interrupt uh, would be allowed to call the functions of our operating system. As we can see from this configuration, the lowest possible priority, so number three, is assigned to two interrupt uh, procedures. The first one is a system tick timer, so SysTick, which is used uh, to generate the tick interrupt, and the second one is a pendable request for system service, so pend SV, which is uh, used uh, to switch the context uh, from one task uh, to the other. Both of them have the lowest possible priority, to do not interfere, to do not block any hardware interrupt within the embedded system. Some of the interrupts uh, have the priority number zero, as you can see. Those are very important ones and should not be blocked by the operating system. So we've got non maskable interrupt, we've got half-fault interrupt, uh, we've got as well time-based interrupt coming from timer 6, which would be used by the HAL library. The rest of the interrupts uh, has been set uh, with the priority number 2, which means that it will be possible to execute the operating system from those interrupt routines. It is visible on this last column over here. If I unclick this, the interrupt priority would change immediately to 0, which means that this function would be above the operating system and uh, this interrupt routine should not interfere with the operating system. I would change it once again. And what we are missing here is, uh, in fact, uh, enabling the interrupt from our blue button, so XT line 13. I'm enabling this, its priority is 2, so it means that uh, we would like to execute functions from the operating systems from this, uh, from this interrupt. Okay, now we can generate the code. Okay, so let's uh, come back to our coding. And let's change the default uh, task application functions. Within the task one, I would like to turn on green LED and then go to the blocked state for one second. So I would go to this uh, for loop and I would uh, just set the green LED to the high state. Right pin, and then we've got uh, LED, LED green port, and then the pin, LED green pin, and the pin state, GPIO pin set. So this is turning on our green uh, LED. And then we will wait uh, for one second. Please have a look that I'm not using uh, HAL delay, but OS delay. The difference is that HAL delay would block us for one second within this function, while OS delay is um, changing the state of our task uh, from running mode to the blocked uh, one which allows uh, operating system to switch to the other task, which has some job to be done within this, uh, this time. So this is uh, not wasting any time. Operating system is immediately uh, changing the active task from our, uh, which is going to blocked state uh, to the other, which is much more uh, efficient. So this is the step uh, number uh, one. Step number two uh, would be to do the similar operation with uh, task number two, but in task number two, we will just switch off the task, the, the LED, and this time we will do some modification of OS delay, just not to, to be the same time. So I'm uh, sw switching it off and waiting uh, for some uh, time. Come back to GPIO configuration. After configuring the GPIOs and uh, its mode and labels, let's have a look uh, whether we've got the proper configuration of uh, external interrupt uh, input. 
By default, it is configured as an external interrupt mode uh, with rising edge trigger detection, while uh, in our application the blue button is connected in such a way that it should be active on a falling edge. This is why we need to change it uh, to external interrupt mode with falling edge uh, trigger uh, detection. We will do the following uh, modification. Instead of using uh, OS delay function uh, within the task uh, 1, we will go into the blocked state uh, waiting for the semaphore. So I would command this line and instead of this uh, I would wait uh, for the semaphore. So I would uh, use the function OS semaphore control space and then wait. We've got the binary sem handle semaphore and milliseconds. I would put, use here the value OS wait forever. Uh, OS wait forever is in fact, if we have a look, uh, it's in fact the maximum value for 32-bit uh, variable. And uh, how it is how it is working? This function is uh, sending our task into the blocked state, inactive blocked state, uh, for the time uh, till the semaphore will come, will be released, or the timeout will collapse. In this case, uh, it will be quite long. This is why this is OS wait forever. So we will uh, we will wait uh, till the, the semaphore would be released. And uh, where we should uh, release the uh, semaphore? To release the semaphore, we need to go for a while into the g0 underscore itc.c file, where we will find the external interrupt routine for our uh, microcontroller. I can find this function within the halgpio.c uh, file and I can see that uh, a hal library is clearing all the flags and then once the flag is cleared it's calling the proper callback. Uh, as we are uh, working with this external interrupt on falling edge this would be the callback uh, which should be used by us. It is defined as an empty function with weak attribute, so we can redefine it within our piece of code. I would copy paste it, and within the main.c file, in this user code begin for user code end for, I would use this callback. Then we can check whether it was exactly the, 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 the pin we were looking for called, so I would put if, and then I would use this blue pin label. So if our variable so GPIO pin has been this uh, blue button pin, I would release the semaphore. So OS semaphore control space. So we need to release the semaphore. It's like with the traffic lights. Release the semaphore means that uh, I giving something, yes, which can be reused uh, afterwards by other component of the operating system, like task one. So the only argument here is a handler for this semaphore, this one, and that's it. One more uh, thing uh, on this on this point. Using this callback, uh, executing code within this callback is still done within the uh, interrupt routine of uh, external interrupt uh, from line 13. This is an important point uh, because uh, please uh, remember that our hardware interrupts should not interfere with the operating system. The cooperation between uh, hardware interrupts and operating system functions should be done in careful way. The big advantage of the CMC's uh, layer is that the CMC's library is taking care of selecting proper function if we are calling the operating system function from the uh, normal code or from the interrupt routines. If we have a look into this function, if we have a look on this function, this uh, in cmc's os.c, not .h, it is coming unfortunately to the header file, not. We see that uh, it is checking at the beginning if we are in a handler mode, so in the interrupt routine, or we are in a normal code. From uh, interrupt routine, it is calling a different. Uh, free RTOS API function with from ISR suffix, which is checking whether there was any any component, any task 
woken up by this event, by this semaphore? And if yes, it is checking whether there is a need to change the context uh, to different uh, task which could, has been just woken up. Uh, so this is an important point that using CMC's OS layer, we don't need to take care about uh, selecting the proper function. It is done automatically by mm, the API. Okay, so uh, coming back to our code, we have just added this semaphore. Let's try to compile the code. So now uh, the task one, which is uh, responsible for turning on the LED, uh, would wait uh, for the semaphores, for the, uh, which would be released by the pressing the button. In the meantime, uh, only the task two, which is turning off the LED, would be active. So now if I will go into the, into the debug mode, and run the code. Okay, so we will switch uh, timer assisting to timer 7. Please have a look that timer 7 disappeared from available timers. And now if we save uh, and generate the code, we should have a new file, stm 32 g 0 xx time based time which contains the functions to suspend tick, resume tick, all the functions which are used by the HAL library uh, to generate the timeouts and delay functions. And now if we uh, compile the code of semaphore added, in the meantime we can have a look on uh, interrupt C routine, we see that uh, Timer 7 IRQ handler has been added. If we go to the debug mode, uh, I start the application. I can see my LED turn on for a while and then turn off because the timer, uh, the task 2, is only active. T task 1, which is turning on LED, is not active, waiting for the semaphore, which can be given by the interrupt triggered by the blue button. I press the blue button and for a while. Uh, the green LED is uh, turned on and then turned off because task 2 is uh, taken into, into account. So that's it uh, for, this, uh, for this exercise. Thank you for watching this video.